New this morning, one person is dead and several others were hurt during a crash in Grant County last night. Police officials say around 8 p.m., a truck with four passengers ran a stop sign and collided with a car with two people in it, causing the truck to roll onto its top and the car to crash into a soybean field. Let's go live to ABC 21's Rex Smith. He's at the Coliseum this morning with more. Hi, Rex. Hey, good morning, Emily. Good morning, everyone. Well, you know that phrase, bigger is always better. Well, why don't you just take a look at this monstrosity of a machine, tires that are taller than me. I'm by no means a big, tall guy, but still, this is this is quite the product, and this is one of the many things you'll see down here. At ABC 21 is your weather authority, and we're bringing you team coverage this morning to keep you informed on today's snowfall. Caitlin Kendall is standing by in Columbia City. We'll check in with her in just a moment, but first, let's turn things over to Caleb Chevalier at the Weather Pod with a look at that forecast. Caleb, good morning. Well, I've had too many people in their family got killed, you know, so I'm th thank God he's living. That's the main thing. Family of victims sharing their frustrations of the violence that hit so close to their homes after a shooting that happened on the city's southeast side yesterday. It's an update to a story we brought you as breaking news last night at 6. Just after 6 p.m., authorities rushed to Gaywood Drive near Congress Avenue on reports of a shooting. There they found two victims. Police dispatchers confirmed to us late last night that they are both expected to survive. We spoke to a couple who claims to be related to the victims, and they say they are fed up with the violence. It's very upsetting in the community. I mean, it keeps happening and happening. You know, it's, it's, it seems like there's no end to it. You know, they just, they don't know who they shoot. They just come by shoot people. You know, when I came around, I just shook my head. I was just hoping that he was all right, but I happened to see him when they brought him out mm -hmm. on the EMS, and he's doing all right. I'm blessed God for that. So far, no word on if there are any suspects. You can stay with us for updates. A former head lifeguard and swimming instructor at a Fort Wayne YMCA who was also an actor in several civic theater productions involving children is charged with possession of child pornography. Court documents say in February, 27-year-old Isaac Loniker had his Google account open on a computer at the DuPont Road Parkview Family YMCA when two colleagues saw child pornography on the screen. The co-workers told a supervisor who quickly copied the images onto a flash drive and turned it over to the Fort Wayne Police Department. Loniker was fired immediately. Back in June of 2017, we introduced you to a Hamilton man who shared an unbreakable bond with his daughter. It was a relationship that, even after Brittany Moser's death, inspires her father to live free and fearless. Phil Moser says he feels that in the darkest of moments, he's found the light. He believes the torch his daughter carried has been passed on to him and his wife, and because of that, they made some pretty special connections on their journey. One of the toughest things a parent could ever experience is losing a child. It's definitely the hardest thing in my life. That's what Phil Mosier and his wife Marilyn dealt with in February of 2017 when their daughter Brittany died at 32 after almost two years of dealing with Addison's disease. It's a rare condition where the adrenal glands produce an insufficient amount of cortisol. The most common symptom is fatigue. It's a lifelong disease that requires you take steroids, and there is no cure. But Phil says that never changed Brittany's adventurous personality. She lived life fearlessly. She tackled life fearlessly. Brittany had asked her dad to accompany her on what they called adventures. They were 20 places on this BuzzFeed article she wanted to see. A bucket list of sorts. It seemed Brittany knew she was facing death. She wrote her parents and sister this note she left on her phone four months prior to her passing away telling them she lived a full life and was happy and at peace. For her to leave that message was telling us to carry on. <laughs> and carry on they did. That's exactly what I wanted to do was finish what we had started. Brittany only made it on 13 adventures. So Phil and Marilyn decided to complete the last seven, plus an additional trip Brittany asked to add to the list several weeks prior to her passing. Along with 11 family members and close friends, including Brittany's older sister Camille, the family made the difficult almost 10 hour hike to Sky Pond in Colorado. This is what she wanted. And so we were beyond determined to make sure that what she wanted happen. So they did it, hiking for hours until they got to their destination. It's only fitting that she would want us to come here. And then shared a special moment with Brittany's ashes, which made the trip with them. She was full of life. She loved people and she loved adventure and she liked a little drama too. And she was always she lived in the moment. She enjoyed the moment like nobody I had ever met in my entire life. 
And for me, that redefined living in the moment. Like all of their previous trips, Phil documented his adventure to Sky Pond on his Facebook page in an attempt to spread awareness about Addison's disease and the message of living life free and fearless just as Brittany did. One of the people who followed his posts closely is a Fort Wayne woman who saw our original story air and just had to connect with him on Facebook because she too has Addison's disease. For Phil to share the story and then for someone to reach out to us that had Addison's disease, it, it felt like it was a closeness that we, you know, we could understand more. So after a year of Facebook messages, we set it up for Phil and Shelly McGuire to meet in person. Uh -huh. to meet him. <laughs> hmm. It was a moment they were both looking forward to. So good to meet you. You also. Well, you thank have no you. No idea. When you turned the corner mm -hmm. and you saw Phil, what was that no. moment like for you? Oh, uh, it was filled with absolute elation. They shared gifts with each other and then sat down to talk about their relationship and how difficult living with Addison's disease can be. So on any given day, you wake up not knowing, am I going to be able to do the things I need to do today? Phil and Marilyn believe their relationship with Shelly is a direct result of striving to be more like Brittany. In order to keep sending that message, Phil is now writing a book detailing Brittany's inspiring life. It's the family's goal for everyone to live free and fearless. We've inspired a lot of people, and I hope that we continue to do that. I refuse to be a victim of this disease or what's happened to her. I, I am moving forward positive. What I received from Brittany far as her inspiration for 32 years, that far outweighs the, the fact that she was cut short in life.